Drop it. What is going on everybody, my name is Flexi and welcome to the channel for another video and today we're going to talk about the ban list, this has been released yesterday, we've been waiting for this for like two weeks now, uh, it's super hype, uh, we've all been looking forward to this and whether it's good or bad, you're going to see in just a second. So uh, this is not going to be a live reaction by the way, I've, I've done this on our squad channel already, I've mentioned the channel a few days ago already, uh, it's going to be in the description, so if you speak German or if you just want to see some cool live reactions and other deck profiles, dual videos, etc, uh, we're going to do lots of stuff, then uh, go check out the channel in the description but now let's hop into the ban list now the first three cards on the list are not really interesting to me personally because i'm not a like synchro elvis player i'm not an emancipated player so block dragon going away is definitely gonna hurt the emancipated strategy and jet synchron and also uh, mecha phantom is all lion are huge hits and now personally i don't know too much about adam Spader and the like halky fibrax synchro engines uh that are splashed into Eldritch, for example but i'm pretty sure especially with the block dragon hit that adam Spader is definitely going to lose a lot of power and it might still be able to perform huge combos but i'm pretty sure it's not as resilient as before because the block dragon surge 3 was just insane and helping the deck out hugely in terms of synchro Eldritch, i'm not really sure i i don't know about that but also uh, Dragma Eld or Dogmatica Eldritch or just pure Eldritch in, in itself is also pretty consistent and just actually oppressive so uh, it might not hurt that deck too much and also it's a bit scary because now Eldritch might take over the format uh, on its own or maybe like with Dogmatica so uh, we'll have to see I, I hope it doesn't I want to see some other decks on top now or at least like compete on, at the top right uh, I, I don't necessarily need to see a Dog uh, Emancipator and Eldritch like completely drop out of the tier 1 but uh, seeing like maybe Orcist or any other like cool deck uh, go to the top and compete with them would be pretty nice. But the limited cards, uh, there's we've gotten back double Iris Magician. With personally, I'm a Pendulum player too, so uh, among others, and this is I was pretty hyped to see that, but then afterwards I didn't actually find to uh, need this card in my Pendulum strategy because I'm playing pure and demon, and it's probably gonna stay like that too. So maybe I'm gonna build like for fun a budget. Pendulum Magicians uh, build on the side uh, just to make use of double iris and searching the pendulum graphs but um, I'm still pretty happy to see that Konami didn't forget about pendulums uh, after all those hits after limiting Selene and stuff oh, no, not Selene sorry uh, Servant of Endymion and banning Electromite and all that so uh, it's pretty cool that they didn't forget about that then the next card on the list is Phantom Knight of Rusty Bardish, which personally I've, I've started playing competitively last July, so uh, Bardish was banned already, and it might have been that exact list where he got banned, I don't know exactly now, but um, the only deck I think about when I hear Rusty Bardish is Orcus, and um, while I do hope that Orcus is not going to be as oppressive as it was back then, which it probably won't be because they still lost Harporer, um, there are many other cards now that are just going to help out or, or might help out the Orca strategy greatly, like Appaloosa and IP Mascarena and whatnot. So, uh, in combination with Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardish, I really hope that Orcas can uh, regain a little bit of their former power. Now, Caught by the Grave is the only thing that I don't really understand on this list. I mean, yeah, sure, combo decks have been super oppressive lately, and uh, an Emancipator could play through multiple hand traps probably without losing any power in their end board or maybe just losing like one negation or whatever but they still probably end on four or five with the extra deck lock and stuff so uh, i understand why you want to push going second strategies or strategies that they have to go up against combo decks frequently and then prepare with, uh, for it with hand traps a lot but honestly the reason why those tier one combo decks were so oppressive was not because of call by the grave it was, it was not because they were able to play through multiple uh, hand traps due to call by the grave they were able to do that because of Block Dragon, for example, or because of the insane advantage generated by the Synchro Engine and stuff, so limiting it. Like, if they if they didn't hit an Emancipator in any other way, and they only limited Caught by the Grave, it wouldn't have changed the meta at all, except for hurting the uh, Rogue tier or like tier 2 combo decks. But that way it's just a little overkill if you ask me, because the Synchro Engine has been hit, an Emancipator has been hit, and now they have Caught by the Grave, which is not gonna add into the same train of uh, hitting the top tier combo deck, but uh, I guess it's whatever, I don't know. We still have Crusadia power, right? 
then there's Harpy's Feather Duster, which I personally don't really care about. It's cool that they released this old, like, extremely powerful spell card. Obviously, I, I don't want to say that Harpy's Feather Duster isn't powerful. I just want to say that it's, per for me personally, I don't really care about it. Maybe I'm going to, like, put it in a side deck or whatever, but currently I'm not even considering that. So, uh, yeah. But, but I like to see that they release a very old and very powerful card, which some people might have even thought is never going to come back off the list. Uh, which is a nice little plot twist there, if you ask me. Now, uh, Seer and Graf are Burning Abyss unbanned. Personally, for me personally, I couldn't care less. But uh, a friend of mine is a Burning Abyss player, so I really hope that it can somehow help him out with that. But also, Burning Abyss is basically like Pendulum. It's almost even one of those meme decks that never really leaves the format or at least there's always like this one player that can play Burning Abyss at the top levels even if most people can't similarly to Pendulums you know um, so I like that they're getting back some of their power and uh, especially with the now we're jumping between the list a little bit but uh, Tour Guide to 3 is also a huge consistency boost so uh, yeah I really hope it can uh, help them in some way then there's the ABC Dragon Buster uh, and Totally Awesome going to 2, which have been limited when Master Rule 5 came around because Konami was probably afraid of them. Uh, ABC Dragon Buster is probably not going to do anything uh, too crazy now. Even if it was a 3, I don't really think it would do anything too crazy. Um, so, but, but this is a typical Konami thing, right? Like even in the one like a year and a half that I've been playing competitively now, or like, was it? Yeah, probably a year and a half now, maybe a, a little bit less. But Konami does this a lot, where they limit a card that they are scared of doing too much uh, in the current format, and then they see that it doesn't do anything at one, so they slowly keep putting it back. I mean, now jumping between the lists again, they did the same thing with Widow Anchor, right? They put it to one, if I remember correctly, and then they brought it back to two after Engage was banned, and then they brought it back to three in this list. And that's just a typical thing, so probably, most likely, next list, we're gonna see Dragon Buster and Totally Awesome come back to three, except if one of those, like, gets abused super heavily or for some reason does way too much in the current format, which I really don't think it will. But also, if Totally Awesome goes to zero, I'm not gonna complain. I hate frogs, I hate paleo decks, I just don't wanna play against this card, and yeah. So, uh, if you ask me, uh, Totally Awesome could've stayed at zero. Now, coming to the Unlimits, uh, we have Makura, the Destructor, who has been eroded, so you can only activate one trap card per turn and uh, from your hand, and you have to send him specifically from your field to the graveyard, which is limiting his power massively. He's basically not going to do anything, I'm pretty sure. I, I don't really see him, right? Maybe he can be abused in some way, like for one super powerful trap card or whatever, but I'm not really sure about that. And uh, at the same time, I was kind of uh, surprised that I didn't bring back Red Eyes Darkness Mellow Dragon to 3 2 because he was also errata, I think even at the same time as Makura or like shortly after or something, uh, where he is a hard one per turn. And now having multiples of him in the deck doesn't even help you, right? Espe except maybe they're scared that some 60 card Dragon Link deck comes around and then like opening multiples and whatever. I don't know. I, I really don't know why they didn't bring it back to 3. I don't think it would do anything more. I don't even think it would be played at more than one, even if it was a 3, right? But uh, I guess it's just what it is. And then the tour guide uh, unban I talked about already is gonna help Burning Abyss, it's just a very cool thing. But also tour guide was the same thing, that they first limited it, or it was limited, then they unlimited it, and now they uh, brought it back to 3 because they saw that even the 2 it didn't do anything too crazy, so uh, typical Konami thing. Then this Ghost Kraken, which I don't know personally, but I've heard that it's responsible for some hand loop combos, and it's kind of counterintuitive to me that they unbanned this. Or unlimited this because now it might get abused. Now, as I said, I don't know the card, I don't know the strategy, so maybe it's not as abusable and not as splashable to perform uh, hand loops on a consistent basis. But even so, like they're limiting so many things, so many cards, or banning so many cards that enable hand loops and FTKs, and now they're bringing back Gust Crack and it doesn't make sense to me personally. But uh, I just hope it's not going to do anything too crazy. And there's Pantheism, boosting the consistency by drawing two cards and stuff. Uh, it's pretty nice, but as far as I've heard, now I haven't been around when this deck was around, obviously, but uh, I've heard it's not going to do anything to the strategy, so, or like, it's not it's not going to boost the, the strategy to a consistency level where it's too crazy for the current format, right? Um, but I hope it's going to do something, at least. And then the last card is Widow Anchor, I also touched upon this already. Uh, it's pretty cool. Now, Splash Tracker doesn't have those card advantage shenanigans they had before, so uh, having Widow Anchor back at 3 at least helps them break some boards maybe, or uh, having 
more interruptions in the archetype itself without completely breaking the format. So uh, I really like this hit, especially because I like Sky Striker, like the, the mechanics with the extra deck monsters and stuff, and the main monster zones having to be free for your cards to help you gain the advantage over your opponent and stuff. I like this a lot. Engage is a broken card, but uh, now with Widow Anchor 3, I'm hoping to see some more Sky Striker action. And now to sum this video up, I'm just gonna talk really quick about the cards that basically change my decks that I personally play. And the only cards I, I can really think about now are Caught by the Grave for my Crusadia deck and the Double Iris Magician for my Pendulum deck, which as I said before, I think that uh, Double Iris Magician is not gonna do anything to pure Pendulums, pretty sure. And I'm most likely gonna stay with pure Pendulums for now because I really like their playstyle and the end boards and the combos and stuff. Um, but it's definitely worth looking into. Triff Gaming has already done a video on that, like the Pendulum Magicians combo he's done is insane. Uh, maybe I'm gonna build this like on the side for fun, or like to just have different playstyles of Pendulums, uh, so I can switch it up. And um, and also the Call by the Grave is just gonna, as I said before, it hurts the Rogue combo decks. Uh, it wasn't the reason that the combo decks at the top were at the top back then, like before the ban list is what I'm saying. So I really don't see it, but. Uh, maybe it's because of Crossout Designator, which I don't know whether I've mentioned this before, like already here in this video, but uh, there's a card gonna be released soon in the TCG, which already is out in the, TC in the OCG, which is uh, Crossout Designator. It's basically called by the grave, but you have to have the hand traps that you want to counter in your deck. So it's, it's a little bit of a worse version of called by the grave uh, in that particular instance. But we're gonna get that soon and maybe they wanna prepare for selling the card and thereby limiting Call Pad Grave is like a marketing move. But you know, it's Konami, so uh, we're just gonna wait and see. So yeah, that's it guys, basically. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm really curious to hear what you guys think about this ban list because I'm also pretty happy that we got, I think I counted yesterday, I forgot the exact number. I think it was about 20 like hits or un unlimit uh, that are on this list. And c comparing to the list before where we only had three unlimits and nothing else on the ex entire list, uh, it's pretty nice to see that they didn't just, you know, keep the list empty again because of Corona or whatever. Um, but also tell me whether you have to like build your decks differently now or whatever because uh, maybe your decks have been hit or maybe your decks have been boosted by things that came up. Maybe you're a uh, pure Phantom Knights player and you're super happy about this or whatever. Uh, so tell me in the comments. Uh, and also if you're looking for a new deck then uh, stay tuned and maybe subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna do it an in-depth Crusadia tutorial where I'm gonna explain every single card of the archetype. I'm gonna show you multiple engines that you can splash in, different combo paths, um, different all the different ways you can end uh, your your turn with like the end boards the negates and whatever uh, there's super many things you can do crusadia is an ex extremely flexible archetype and uh, i'm also going to explain the combos and stuff so if you're curious for that then definitely stay tuned i'm going to do combo tutorials i'm going to do deck profiles uh, also there's a video coming where uh, we've been scared that lp might get banned so one of, uh, one of the subscribers on Team COG's channel, who is also a Crusader player, found out about a combo where we don't need LP to go to Sir Yuja with a two card combo just as before. Um, it's a little bit more convoluted, but it's definitely worth looking into, especially if, he, if we ever do, do lose LP. Uh, it's important to keep that in mind and to always be ready and prepare for the next format. So uh, stay tuned for all that, subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you enjoyed this video. If you didn't, then let me know what you didn't like because I always want to improve my content so you guys can enjoy my videos. And other than that, guys, See you next time.